New CNN polling out this morning with a fresh look at what voters are thinking and what how they are feeling in two battleground states, Michigan and Pennsylvania. They were key to President Biden's win in 2020, and the new data shows his campaign may have work to do in order to win them this time around. CNN's Harry Enten is here with his look at the new polling. What do you see in these numbers first and foremost? What do I Start see? In, what do I see in these numbers? All right. First case, this Michigan numbers. Oh, these are not good for the incumbent president of the United States. Donald Trump at 50 percent, Joe Biden at 42 percent. I looked back at the 2020 polling, and at no point during the campaign was there a single poll that met CNN standards for publication in which Donald Trump led Joe Biden. There were zero. Here we already have one, and I looked at the average of polls, and I looked at our previous CNN poll, and they all show the same thing, which is that Donald Trump is ahead of Joe Biden in the Wolverine state. You go over to Michigan, look. No clear leader. That's the key thing going on. These two gentlemen are tied. But again, this is a state that Joe Biden won last time around by a little bit more than a percentage point. So this is not the type of polling that Joe Biden wants to see here, but in clearly in much better shape in Pennsylvania than in Michigan. I was going to say the Biden campaign can take some comfort in here in, in the numbers and, and where the support and where the support uh, maintains. But this is Michigan seems to be where they need where they are looking, probably looking closer and where there's work to do. What's the biggest change in Michigan from last election? That yeah, you're seeing here? You, you know, this is something I have been harping on and harping on and harping on. So let's break this down by race, right? Let's look at voters of color, look at white voters. And what we see here is back in 2020, according to the exit poll, Joe Biden won voters of color in Michigan by 62 points. Look at that advantage today. It has been sliced by a third, only 21 points. That's Joe Biden's lead over Donald Trump among voters of color. Among white voters, Donald Trump has gained a little bit of steam as well. It was 11 points in 2020. His margin over Joe Biden right now is 16 points. But this the decline in support for Joe Biden among voters of color in Michigan is something we've been seeing in state after state after state and nationally as well, where he's got some big problems. This is a historic low amount of support for a Democratic presidential candidate among voters of color, and it seems to be happening across the board, Kate. You're also taking note in Michigan specifically, I think, yes. of the view from voters on Trump's efforts to overturn the election. It's exactly right. So, you know, Joe Biden has his flaws in the voters' mind. Donald Trump has his flaws. Look, look, let's look at what could be a flaw for Donald Trump. If true, the charges against Trump regarding efforts to overturn the 2020 election disqualify him from the presidency, cast doubts on his fitness for the job, or aren't relevant to his fitness for the job. Here, only 44 percent, only 44 percent of registered voters say they disqualify him from the presidency if they are true. This isn't asking whether or not they're true. We're saying if they are true, do they disqualify him? disqualify Donald Trump from the presidency. And only 44% of registered voters say they in fact do. This to me is a big problem for Joe Biden because the fact is even if Trump gets a conviction, it's not clear to me that voters will abandon him. And it's nearly equal to this 42% who say they aren't relevant to his fitness for the job. But isn't that squishy? Because that could also mean I'm not, I don't, I don't think he's, I don't think he's fit for the job no matter what, or I think he's fit for the job. Yeah, right? I mean, I will say I dug into the cross tabs okay. as I like to do. Cross it's, tabs. The, it's the Republicans who are saying this. It's not the Democrats. Okay. The Democrats <laughs> are overwhelmingly saying this. I, 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 it's a clever question, but no, this does pretty much get at the idea that there are a lot of voters out there who are essentially saying, you know, even if these charges are true, they don't disqualify him. Please note, Harry said that was a clever question. Um, <laughs> what about one of Biden's biggest perceived weaknesses that voters across the board are concerned about, which is his age? Yes, thinking about what you want in President Biden's sharpness and stamina are exactly what you want. This is where I think Joe Biden wants voters to be. It's only 7%. Close enough, 24%. How about not what you want in Michigan? 69%, 69% not what you want. This to me is the big problem for Joe Biden because the fact is while a majority of voters are saying even if the charges against Trump are true in Michigan, they don't disqualify him. Here, the majority of voters in Michigan are saying that Joe Biden's sharpness and stamina are not what you want. Okay, Big so problem. there are months to go. Yes. Things can and likely will shift and change more than once. Yes. Polls are a snapshot in time. Yes. What does this snapshot in time say about the electoral? Yeah, process? I've been waiting to press that button so you could get all <laughs> of those. You're like, <laughs> just there, just waiting for it. Well, the caveats matter. Caveats do matter, absolutely. Based on recent polling and past results, Donald Trump leading in the Electoral College right at this particular point. CNN's David Chalian has much more for us. David, a smart man named David Chalian. 
flagged this morning that roughly a quarter of voters in both of these states say that they are not locked in to their vote quite yet. Why is that so important? Which Talk makes to us. sense, right, Kate? Because we are still seven plus months away from the election. So uh, it's important because, A, as we know with polls, this is a snapshot in time. But when voters tell you, yeah, I could change my mind, it kind of proves the point uh, that there is work to be done here for both the Trump and the Biden campaigns uh, with all these months ahead of them to seal the deal. But I want to go inside a little bit some of the demographic slices underneath those horse race numbers that you just provided. Look here in Pennsylvania. If you look among independents, you see that Biden's at 46 percent, Trump at 36 percent. He's plus 10 among independents. Back in 2020, according to the exit polls, Biden was plus eight in Pennsylvania among Indies. So within range, women, he's plus eight with women. Back in 2020 in the exit polls, Biden was plus 11 in Pennsylvania among women again within range. So as you noted, pieces of the Biden coalition here seem to be coming back to him in Pennsylvania. That is a different story when you look at Michigan. Uh, Michigan, again, look at these same demographic slices. Biden is minus 10 to Trump among independents. Well, back in the 2020 exits, Biden won independence in Michigan by six. Women, it's roughly even here, given the margin of error. I would call that uh, a three-point split, 48-45, roughly even split among women between Trump and Biden. Biden won women in Pennsylvania by 14 percentage points in 2020 in the exit. So there is clearly pieces of the Biden coalition in Michigan that are not yet sort of returning to the norm of where they were in 2020. And what about the continuing question about a third party, David? Kate, I find this fascinating. Look here at the just horse races, again, among registered voters. We're not in the season of looking at likely voters just yet. But you see here in Pennsylvania, Trump gets 40% to Biden's 38% to RFK Jr. 16% to Cornell's 4%. The first thing I want to just note here, because I think this is the biggest uh, factor of the third party support at this moment, it lowers Trump's win number, right? He's winning that race, basically, if you will, I no clear leader, but he's numerically ahead with 40% of the vote. That's all he needs to be uh, getting uh, the most support there. Same thing in Michigan. If you look at the third party factor there, you see that uh, Donald Trump's number to come out on top, his win number here, also at 40 percent. It's just dramatically lower uh, for Trump when the to get over the hurdle of winning the state with the third party there. Now, when we look inside, we see that those Kennedy voters they're sort of pulling, he's pulling from Republicans and Democrats near equally. So it's not entirely clear in terms of the support where it's totally pulling from in terms of advantage for Biden or Trump, but it is clear that it lowers uh, the threshold needed to win a state. How is President Biden's approval rating, which we track all the time, of course, how is his approval rating playing into any of this or not? It's such a good question. We do track it all the time, and it has been sort of a reliable indicator for decades in politics, uh, especially for incumbents, right, who are running for re-election. Look at uh, Joe Biden's approval rating in Pennsylvania first. You see he's at 40 percent approval, 60 percent disapproval. That's basically where he's been sort of uh, nationally as well on average. But again, in Michigan, we see something different. He's at 35 percent approval in Michigan, 64 percent disapproval. It is a tougher electorate in Michigan for him now, and specifically in basically all the polling that we've seen after October 7th uh, and the uh, Israel Hamas issue, how it's particularly playing there. But Kate, the question is, is Biden the factor in this race? According to these polls in these two battleground states, Trump is the factor. Trump is the factor for both Biden voters and Trump voters. Look in Pennsylvania. You see Biden voters overwhelmingly say they're voting against his opponent. Uh, 61 percent say that of mm. Biden supporters, not for Joe Biden. It's the complete reverse for Donald Trump. We see a similar thing in Michigan. Donald Trump, whether you're a Biden supporter or a Trump supporter, is the driving force in this election. And that may be good news uh, for Joe Biden, who, of course, who is trying to keep Donald Trump uh, front and center in America's minds. That's fascinating, David, to seeing those numbers up there on the grid together. It's great to see you, David. Thank you so much. You were, you you were just stuff. commenting, this is, that's really cool. I just think I mean, David did a great job laying that out. And yeah. the idea that Donald Trump is the central factor, it may be what both campaigns 
That's what? what I'm thinking, right? Because that's what that's what yeah. Biden's saying. D don't compare me to the, uh, the almighty, compare me to the alternative. Yeah, that's exactly. basically the nutshell. By the way, Seasons of Likely Voters, David Chalian's favorite song from Rent, <laughs> Little Known Fast. <laughs>